House Speaker Kevin McCarthy loses his mind and cusses out fellow Republicans over threats of his removal. Hunter Biden gets indicted over federal fraud charges. Oil prices inch higher, making gas more expensive at the pump while lining the pockets of Saudi Arabia. And Elon Musk spills the tea on who's really to blame for the Starlink internet fiasco over Ukraine. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. Representative Matt Gates of Florida has been hounding House Speaker Kevin McCarthy for months to open an impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden. The escalation has gotten so bad that Gates just threatened to file a motion to remove Kevin McCarthy from his position if he does not comply. In response, McCarthy finally snapped, stating, if you want to file the motion, file the effing motion. Now, I'm not going to say the F word because this is a family-friendly show. But anyway, that's the drama that was going on today at the Capitol. Now, just two days ago, McCarthy did order his committee to open an impeachment inquiry, which signals that he may finally believe there's enough evidence to warrant an impeachment inquiry. Now, as the threat of an impeachment inquiry inches closer, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi pushed back, stating that McCarthy didn't want to initially start an inquiry because he knew he didn't have the votes to pass it. She said he didn't have the votes. That's one reason you don't bring a bill to the floor. They've had, what, nine months of collecting information? They have nothing. So Nancy Pelosi seems to believe that Republicans are on a quest with no evidence and that this will end uh, horribly for them. Hunter Biden has just been indicted on three counts of firearm charges by special counsel David Weiss. These three charges include one count of falsifying a statement to purchase a gun, one count on falsifying a statement on a forum meant to be kept by the gun dealer, uh, excuse me, forum, not forum, and one count of possession by a person who is un, an unlaw, unlawful user of drugs. Shockingly, it seems that Weiss has decided not to charge Hunter with tax violation at this time. As it currently stands, Hunter could possibly face jail time, but I think we all know that it's unlikely considering who his dad, the big guy, is. So far, Hunter has still not been legally connected to his father with any illegal business dealings, but this is what the Republicans say this impeachment inquiry is all about. Now, what's interesting is they've been telling us there's nothing here with Hunter Biden for two years, and they kept pressing, and guess what? Now we know there is something. So to say there's nothing and it's been nine months doesn't mean there isn't a crime. It just means it's being buried at every single turn. While Republicans continue to point fingers at Democrats for ignoring, ignoring Joe Biden's alleged corruption, Democrats are doing the same thing to Donald Trump. During a new interview, Hillary Clinton bashed Republican senators for failing to halt Trump despite knowing of his alleged criminality. Now, speaking of Republicans in Congress, she stated, I don't recognize these people. It is such a disservice to the country. We've got to fight back as best as we can. Now, isn't this the uh, isn't this like the highest form of hypocrisy? This lady literally paid FBI agents and a marketing firm to invent a fake Russian dossier to try to take out a sitting president, and now she's saying, "I don't recognize these people. Who? I can't believe these people." Well, General Mark Milley has just conducted an eye-opening interview with ABC's Martha Raddatz regarding the controversial withdrawal from Afghanistan. During the interview, Raddatz asked Milley if he agreed with General McKenzie, who stated it was a serious mistake not to begin to evacuate embassy personnel, American citizens, and at-risk Afghans earlier. Milley said he agreed and stated, I think as you look back on it, I think that some decisions with respect to moving the embassy and the Department of State could have been made a little easier. So he's basically admitting that letting the Bagram Air Force Base fall, bad idea. 
Not getting the people out first, bad idea. Not getting government employees out, bad idea. Not getting out loyal Afghans first before the military, bad idea. Now, I wonder what his thoughts are on leaving $85 billion worth of, worth of military equipment behind, but she didn't ask the question. Now, Biden's plan to go broke or go green seems to be working. Oil prices have sadly just hit a 10-month high as prices exceed $90 per bar barrel once again. Uh, instead of helping, Biden has decided to cancel oil leases in the Gulf of Mexico and also in Alaska, giving countries like Saudi Arabia even more leverage over the United States of America while lining their pop pop pockets with increasingly higher profits. Now, White House economist Jared Bernstein responded to the sharp price increase by stating, the Energy Department is in touch with producers and refiners to resolve any issue and to try to ensure stable supply. So as the world's leading country, the White House is telling us that our main strategy is to beg our enemies for oil. I mean, this is just embarrassing. Uh, let, let me know down below. Has gas gotten out of, uh, out of control where you live? It's, it's almost four fifty a gallon where I live. It, it's, it's crazy. North Korea's Kim Jong-un is currently in East Russia on his way to visit President Putin. Uh, South Korea's defense minister is on edge due to the nature of the visit, stating, considering that a large number of military personnel accompanying him uh, we are very closely monitoring these negotiations between North Korea and Russia. And technology transfers will also take place. So they've had their first meeting. Putin stated that Russia will likely help North Korea explore rocket engineering, which is not a great sign, right? Now, Russia, like them or hate them, they have brilliant scientists, aerospace engineers. And they're now going to be lending that brain power to North Korea so that they can launch their intercontinental ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons further than they've ever been able to. This is absolutely terrifying. Now, White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby seemed to suggest that the United States may be somewhat to blame for Putin and Kim's recent meeting, uh, Godoy. Now, during an interview with CNN's Wolf Blitzer, Kirby admitted that the Biden administration could more aggressively implement the sanctions that are in place. We could also look at additional sanctions, either unilaterally from the United States or multilaterally. Now, I don't think these sanctions are working. In fact, they've uh, strengthened the BRICS nations and weakened the U.S. dollar. But yeah, let's, let's just press even harder on those sanctions. As Musk continues to face criticism over failing to provide Ukraine's military with Starlink internet, he has come forward to set the record state, uh, straight by claiming he was just following orders from the Biden White House. He stated, at the time the attack happened, the region around Crimea was turned off. And the reason it was turned off was because the United States has sanctions against Russia which includes Crimea, and we are not allowed to turn on connectivity to a sanctioned country without explicit permission, which we did not have from the U.S. government. So the White House has been bitching and complaining about Elon Musk. Senator Warren wanted to turn his life upside down and investigate him, and it was the White House that told him to turn off internet to Crimea. <laughs> this is this is insanity. Can you imagine being set up for a crime by the very people that are going to be investigating you? Do you think this was on purpose or do they just like to throw him under the bus because he's more popular than they are? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, speaking of sanctions, Germany may be using a loophole to buy Russian oil because their energy prices are out of control. The European Union has accused India of repackaging and reselling Russian oil to the rest of the world, which just so happens to be the same oil the country of Germany is increasingly buying. 
Now, despite these damning allegations against India, Germany has increased their buying volume by 10x this year alone. In my opinion, most sanctions never work because there's always a, a way around them. It's just more expensive for the people that have to buy. So instead of getting their gas and oil directly from Russia, now they're paying 10 times as much and they're getting the same product. I mean, would you want to put up with this? I imagine your gasoline prices 10 x but you're still getting it from Russia. This is exactly what they're dealing with. Now, the Biden administration is going to have to figure this one out because Germany is not going to put up with these ridiculously high energy prices for much longer. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out these important videos, and I will see you on the next video.